Well, coming up next here at uh, Perry Longchamp is the Qatar Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe, the 100th anniversary of this magnificent horse race, the uh, most prestigious all-age middle-distance horse race in Europe with a fantastic roll of honour, and uh, that roll of honour is going to be supplemented in style today because we've got a very deep renewal with some fantastic horses, a day are the King George and the Epsom Derby winner. We've got a couple of runners for Japan. Japan have gone very close to winning this race in the past. It's just eluded them. Some other leading contenders like Tanawa for the Aga Khan and trainer Dermot World, who's broken international barriers in the world of horse racing. And this one has just been out of his reach and remains outstanding, but uh, a race that he could well win today. Torqueta Tasso and Reni Pichelek is number one. Number two is Deep Bond for Japan, Mikael Barcelona. Yutaka Taki is on broom. Number four, Tanawa, Christoph Sumion. Five, Love is a non-runner. Number six, Rabihar and Christian Demuro. Seven, Chronogenesis, Ashim Murphy for Japan. Mojo Star and Rosso Ryan. Yoritz Mendethabel on Baby Rider. A day are in the first colours of Godolphin, William Buick. Hurricane Lane in the white cat, James Doyle. Seal away, last year's Jean-Luc Lagardère winner, Frank Blondel. Alan Kerr and Tom Marquand, Bubble Gift and Gerald Mosse. And Snowfall makes up the lineup in the hands of Ryan Moore. I think it's a very deep race. Don't you, Andrew? Indeed, yeah. Even going through it, you can kind of... You can make good cases for four or five, and then there's a few others that you think, well, that could, that could run well of those um, those longer shots. So, yeah, it's a, it's a cracking race, not least because we've got the, the day hours, Derby and King George, but that hasn't happened too often over the years, has it? Obviously, been to, to win the three. Lamtar was in 95, I think, it would have been the last to completed that treble. So, he's attempting to achieve something uh, particularly rare, but there's uh, a star cast in, in behind as well. There's a lot of good form on offer here. I thought that um, Tanar was second to St. Mark's Basilica in the Irish Champion Stakes was possibly just about the best form on offer, along with Adeo's win in the King George beating the subsequent jump on international winner Mishriff. Could be that Mishriff is slightly better at a mile and a quarter than a mile and a half, but even so, he's still a formidable horse over a mile and a half and beat Chronogenesis in the Dubai Shima Classic. So I thought Adeo and and uh, Tanawa had the balance of the best form possibly. Yeah, uh, agreed. And when you can't, yeah, it's hard to pick holes in what he has done, isn't it? As you say, Mistriff is what the joint highest rated horse in, in the world al alongside him. And when I mean, he might have beaten him, I agree, to some Mistriff stamina probably ed ebbed away in the final furlong in that race. But Adeo was may well have beaten him at a mile three or slightly shorter, mightn't he? Because he was, he was in front early in the straight at, at Ascot. So. Um, he's a serious horse today, I've no doubt about that. Big question mark with him, of course, is these, these conditions, isn't it? So the jockey's uh, lining up uh, here and uh, on the left, Ashim Murphy there in the Red Cross belts. Rene uh, Pichuluk, who run, rides the Torquato Tasso, Yutaka Taki, Christoph Simeon, who rides Tanawa, William Buick in the blue jacket. Near side here, James Doyle in the white cam, he'll be riding Hurricane Lane as they line up for the cameras. And this is quite an important moment for the horses because the paddock at, at Longchamp, on, just before the arc, gets very busy indeed. And it would be very easy for a horse to boil over. And it's important because this is a long distance race and there's going to be a lot of stamina needed today that they stay calm. And so we'll just keep an eye on that as uh, the jockeys get on board in the next few moments and see which horses are relaxed. Here, Snowfall looks very nicely relaxed. She, she does. Half asleep she does indeed, yeah. I think Tarnawa was one we saw in an earlier show. Now, she, she can get a 
you a few problems down at the start. Can't She's she, a so? nightmare sometimes at the stalls. Uh, she was very bad last season. She wasn't as bad in the Irish champion last time out. Maybe she's maturing in that respect. It doesn't affect the way she runs. She runs very genuinely. Yeah, yeah. But she's uh, got a little bit of a problem at the stalls. And that is uh, Christophe Simon, who'll be uh, jumping aboard the mare very shortly. They're packed paddock. They do allow a lot of people in the paddock before the arc. And the horses just have to navigate their way around them. This is uh, Rabi Har, one of the main hopes for the home team. Very good filly indeed. She was fifth last year behind Sot Sass. She felt brilliant on Wednesday. All right. brilliant on Wednesday. Ashley Murphy. Work out with Sean T. Bruno Genesis is rider. With the white blazes baby rider. On the right there, number nine, one of the big outsiders, just uh, following round Mojo Star. Second to Hurricane Lane in the St. Ledger, second to Adaya in the Derby. Seal away here, I think uh, got a, a lot on, really, Seal away, even though he was successful on this car 12 months ago. Yeah, I mean, that's the plus, I suppose. <laughs> He's going to handle the, the, the conditions, but, um, but yeah, essentially, for all he did run particularly well in the, in the French Derby, looks at... A touch shy of a few of these, you'd think. And there is uh, Yutaka Tanki in the grey and white checks uh, riding for Aidan O'Brien on Broom, Ryan Moore in the purple and white taking them out on Snowfall. Of course, it was Frankie de Tori that rode Snowfall when she met defeat in the Prix Verme last time out. A slowly run affair. She's been very impressive earlier in the season, Snowfall winning by wide margins in both the uh, English and Irish Oaks. Just a question whether she's beaten the quality of horse that she's going to meet today. There is Deep Bond, Japanese runner who won the Prix Foix, a son of Kazuna, who finished fourth in the art behind Trev. And like Kazuna, a really outstanding looking individual and a horse that should stay exceptionally well. He's got four over two miles, hasn't he? So he, he's one of those who's going to be ridden fairly positively, you think, along with Mojo Star and other, of course, with the with the proven stamina. And you'd imagine Hurricane Lane is going to be there, there about some an early stage, wouldn't you, from, from that uh, low draw of his? He had a lovely run round in the Grand Prix de Paris with um, mm. uh, the O'Brien pacemaker just uh, just tracking the O'Brien pacemaker. Took it up early in the home stone. It was just plain sailing, and uh, I'm sure James Doyle would dream of the sort of run that William Buick enjoyed on uh, Hurricane Lane that day. Rather hard, just the head of Chrono Genesis. This is an interesting runner, Alan Kerr, for the William Haggis stable, a very much informed team. Alan Kerr, who beat uh, a day are in the Sandown Classic trial earlier in the season found a mile and a quarter, a little bit on the sharp side last time out behind Mishriff in the Judmont International as James Doyle gets the leg up on Hurricane Lane. Just following uh, ahead of T. Bond there was the German raider Torqueta Tasso who's got a very good record in Germany, high quality form, Germany's horse of the year in 2020. There's just so much depth to this race. Can Japan win after their near misses? Or Fevre in 2012 looked all over the winner but was caught close on, faltered, feared, feared, feared offline, feared, feared offline, off faltered. In, in the same, in the same silks, No course. excuses the following year when no match for Trev, a very good horse. Nakayama Festa was second to Workforce. Deep Impact was third to Rail Link and El Condor Passer second to the brilliant Monsieur in 1999. Andre Farber has won this race eight times. He's the record winning trainer. Winning margins, Rebo, Seabird and Saki all won by six lengths. In soft ground today, testing conditions, it could come under threat. I don't see a horse winning by a wide margin, but if there is going to be a wide margin winner in an arc, it's going to be, I think, in soft ground. Agreed, yeah, yeah. I mean, you think there's, there's too many good that have to. Yes. If one of the big ones performs and the other three or four don't, perhaps that could happen, but you think there's, there's so many good horses in this lineup that such a, a wide mini, winning margin is unlikely, but you, you never know. This horse, Chrono Genesis, on his run behind Mishriff in the Shima Classic, it, it puts him right there, doesn't it? Definitely, uh, yeah. It puts her right yeah. there, I should say. And um, it's just that she's been off the course ever since. That doesn't seem to worry them. Uh, the Japanese horses are often uh, 
are kept away from the track when they're being targeted at a race. And uh, uh, I, she might be the surprise packet. I don't like the draw, though. That is a tricky. Yeah, that's that's why draw. That's a very valid point. Yeah, that outside draw could be tricky for Oshin Murphy to negotiate. Might not be that easy for a day either. In he's out what eleven or twelve, isn't he? I think as well. So. I think he wants to be pretty handy a day. He's a, he's a stout stay. He could just get a toe through, and he's got a little bit of toe, more toe than I think they thought he had. I don't see him coming from way back. I think uh, if uh, William Buick would want to get a good start, he's a little bit slow from the stall sometimes. So yeah, well, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want that from 11, though, would you, in, a, in the field? That's a potential of uh, crux moment there at the start for a day. Or. He was slow away at Lingfield, I remember, earlier in the season, when surprisingly beaten by third realm in the Lingfield Derby trial. How did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? Anyway, so they're about to parade, as is the tradition, for this enormously prestigious, prestigious horse race with uh, over two million pounds, two and a half million pounds at stake. But uh, it's the prestige, really, isn't it? It's just uh, any art winner just enters the, uh, the history books in the world of horse racing. Torqueta Tasso there going through. Deep Bond, it's a striking Japanese trained horse ridden by Mikel Barcelona. Back to Broom. Probably one of the outsiders here, Broom. Have to improve, I think, but uh, has been running very consistently this season. He gets the trip well. Tanawa, one of the leading contenders, weak in the betting this morning, but I see that she's now favourite on the Paris Mutuel. She seems to have a lot going for her. She's got good course form, great preparation, fine run in the Irish Champion Stakes. Rabia Half, fifth last year in the Shadwell Colours. Chrono Genesis and Ashim Murphy, it's a very good Japanese mare. Mojo Star. Second in the Derby, second in the St. Ledger. Looks a stout stayer. Nine is Baby Rider. Yoritz Mendethabel on this big price outsider. 63 to 1 on the Paramount Trail. The Derby and King George winner, Adaya. What a specimen he is. Really powerful looking horse. Bit of a surprise packet for Godolphin perhaps this season. Was considered more of a ledger horse. Hurricane Lane going through shot. Here's Seal Away who won the John Luke Lagardier on this card 12 months ago. Probably quite a weak renewal. And uh, three more at the back of the parade will be Alan Kerr. Here's Alan Kerr and Tom Marquand. A few people fancy Alan Kerr. Bit of each way. Going to go in the ground. Didn't get a great ride in the Grand Prix de Paris. Was out of his ground. Alan Kerr breaking into a canter. And just behind uh, now is Snowfall and Ryan Moore. Can she make amends for her defeat in the Prix Verme after a uh, hitherto faultless campaign taken down very quietly? And here's Bubble Gift, a really improving son of Nathaniel for trainer Mikko Del Zonga and Gerald Mosse in the saddle, but a big outsider, 56-1 to 1 on the Paramutual. The favourite is Tanawa, at just under 3-1 to 1 on the Paramutual. Hurricane Lane, who was well back this morning, is a, about a 7-2 to 2 chance at 4-1 to 1 is a day R. Snowfall is nearly 6-1. to 1. And Chronogenesis is about eight to one. They are the leading players in the market. Do you think Buick would still make the same choice if he knew the conditions were going to be quite as testing as this? It's a good point, and perhaps he should have anticipated that the um, the conditions would be soft. It's, it seems to be yeah, soft here every I, I, I every think, year. Yeah, I think they knew it was going to be soft, but obviously it's probably going more like heavy, hasn't it? After all that rain we had. Last night be an interesting one. Whether he would still side with the same horse, given the uh, I think it would have been difficult for him to jump off. Yeah, Ar uh, King Darby, George and Darby, the King George winner. Whereas Hurricane Lane, for all his achievements, 
I don't think the form is quite on the same level. And, of course, he was behind a day or in the derby. He may have had excuses that day. He lost a couple of shoes, exactly. didn't he? was one that was put forward. And yes. I guess there's always the old Epsom uh, factor as, as And well. he may be a, a much better horse now, Hurricane Lane. I mean, I think he's a perfect racehorse, Hurricane Lane. He, he switches off so well, yeah, yeah. picks up to order, stays well, will go in the ground. I mean... It's, he's, he's impossible to criticise. Yeah, it, well, the thing is, it's hard to pick holes in, in the in the principles, isn't it? I mean, like you say, to, to now we're in, in theory, based on what she did here last year and under similar conditions, what she's done since winning the Breeders' Cup and then reappearing, obviously being very much a campaign geared towards this race, winning on a comeback, then running a cracker over, as you say, a mile and a quarter behind St Mark's. Um, Basilica, who's been the, the best around at that trip this season. And he hung into it, didn't he, as well? Let's, let's, let's not forget. She was, that, didn't, uh, that didn't help on the day either. She could, could argue she was a, a touch unlucky as well. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's that sort of race, as I say, with a lot of solid contenders. I still think Snowfall, to some degree, has been forgotten to an extent on the back of that defeat in a, in a messy uh, Vermeer, because, OK, she might not have beaten him a great deal in those Phillies races, but she beat them comprehensively didn't she won, won the Oaks by double figure yeah. margin it was easy in Ireland and a similar story at York so she certainly looked a filly of the uh, of the highest class after, after that York I think she was she was clear favourite for this race wasn't she it's only on the back of that I say defeat in a, in a steadily run and it was a trial I, as well and yeah. you would imagine that Aidan O'Brien while he would have expected her to win that trial, that there would have been a bit to work on. Yes, it wasn't They are the trials, the Vermeer, yeah, yeah. the, the Foire. Well, there's been a few Trevor and Trevor. Yeah. Oh, there's been a few beating, Trevor certainly beating in the Vermeer, wasn't he, before coming on and, and winning here. And three or four, of course, have such a good record in this race, don't they? And recent this history, Dame Dream, the German train Philly did it. Trevor herself, of course, and, and enable in her three year old campaign, too. Yes, the race of Carver, 2008. Phillies uh, overall have won five of the last 20 runnings. Three-year-olds have won 13 of the last 20 runnings. So it's been a very strong... Of course, they get the uh, weight-for-age allowance, yeah. which is uh, something very peculiar to horse racing, that um, youth is given an allowance in a, in a top-class sporting event. But uh, they're immature horses compared to four-year-olds and upwards based on uh, average performances over many years. So this race not run on strictly level terms. They're, they're carrying a, a range of weights. The three-year-olds get weight from the older horses and the female runners, Snowfall and Chronogenesis and Rabihar, they get a, a, a sex allowance, as does Tanaba, three-pound sex allowance from the older colts and gildings. Loading up. Tanawa's in the green jacket and just need to keep an eye on her she's tricky at the stalls baby rider going going in now looks like alan kerr still out of line going forward here's chronogenesis rabahar is out of line a day are rabahar going forward Room still to go in as well. Rabihar and Christian Demuro. Mojo Star on the near side, Ross Ryan in the purple jacket. <laughs> now here's Tanawa. She usually gives trouble. Is she going to be better behaved today? It doesn't affect her performance if you're worried about that. She's done this before. She can be very tricky indeed at the stalls that she's a hundred percent genuine but she must go in of course looks like the handers are winning hurricane lane standing quietly he's just got the perfect temperament on hurricane lane and tanawa is just about in the favorite has gone in to the stalls broom and a day are Maybe the last two here's broom and yutaka taki the Qatar Prix de la Triomphe 2021, they're off and away. Rabeha very wide early on. Uh, jumping out well was Hurricane Lane towards the inside. Also going forward is Alan Kerr with uh, Deep Bond as well. It's Alan Kerr and Broom from Ro Mojo Star on the inside of Hurricane Lane in the blue-white cap. Adayar's got a good early position from uh, Deep Bond. And uh, then on the inside is Tanawa. 
And they are followed back in the field then by Rabe Ho, who's done well to get across towards the inside, just ahead of Snowfall. And then uh, Torqueta Tasso and Seal Away. Chronogenesis is on the outside. Bubble Gift is at the rear of the field, racing apart from the other slightly is Chronogenesis here in the hands of Ashi Murphy, but making ground now on the outside. It's Broom that just leads with a day are very handy in Chronogenesis. Then Alan Kerr now back in fourth place. Mojo Star is on the inside from Hurricane Lane. Tanawa's right on the inside in the green jacket. Then Torqueta Tasso, a black cap. Deep Bond is out wide in the white bridle. Snowfall just inside. Deep Bond from Rabiha. Baby Rider, Seal Away. And Bubble Gift is the back marker. Swinging right handed now and running downhill. And a day on just about taking it up now in the hands of William Buick. Riding a positive race in searching conditions. And it's a day that's gone a couple of lengths clear of Chronogenesis in second. Broom is third. Alan Kerr in fourth. Mojo Star. Then Torqueta Tasso. Hurricane Lane behind those. Tanawa's on the inside under Christoph Sumion. Then back in the field to Deep Zone. And after these is uh, then Snowfall and Rabi Har and Torqueta and Seal Away. And then Baby Rider at the back of the pack with Bubble Gift. Still making their way towards the final turn and it's a day are shadowed all the way by the Japanese challenger Chrono Genesis who's had a lovely run round Room is third, Alan Kerr being pushed along from Mojo Star to Quaita Tasso. Deep Bond on the outside. Hurricane Lane is driven hard. And now they turn for home in the arc. And it's a Dayar that leads the way, passing the 500. A Dayar is kicking for glory. He's gone three lengths clear, four lengths clear, Chronogenesis. Tanawa is now beginning to run on on the far rail. But can she reel in the leader? Hurricane Lane is fourth. Then to Quaita Tasso. A Dayar only by two lengths. Tanawa's getting closer. So to Hurricane Lane. And on the outside, Torquata Tasso for a massive shot. Hurricane Lane and Tanawa. Torquata Tasso has got up to win. Torquata Tasso for Germany has won the arc. On the far side, uh, Tanawa and Hurricane Lane fighting it out for second and third. And we have a massive upset here. Nearly 70 to 1 on the Pari Mutual. Renny Picheluk has won the arc on Germany's Horse of the Year in 2020, running down Tanawa and Hurricane Lane on the near side, outstaying them. Too good for them. Torqueta Tasso has won the 100th. Breeder Lark to Triumph. Adeo probably kicked too soon. Back in fourth, seal away fifth, snowfall, and trading back to Broom, well beaten off. Tanawa came through far side. Looks to be second. It's tight for a second. We won't prejudge that. But it's gone to number one. Torqueta Tasso. What do you make of that? I turn it. Well, <laughs> no, unexpected, but there's next to no fluke about it. And the, the other right, the right horses were involved in the finishing behind, weren't they? In the, in the, in the it was a hour. stamina race. It was it? a stamina race, yeah. And a day, as you say, I don't think he necessarily went that quick in the first half of the race, but William kicked on. He hasn't at, got at, home. At the top of the straight, and yeah, he clearly hasn't got home, but he's still finished fourth, I think, hasn't he? So the, 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 the horses at the head of the market are all involved in the finish. It's just one that we didn't expect has come down the outside. Always hard to weigh up this German form, isn't it? But he'd won the same race that Daydream did, the Zero Price from Baden, uh, coming into this. And uh, I think, as you also said earlier, soft ground does tend to suit these. It's amazing. Oh, it's well. amazing. I wrote with you. Yeah, you're right with me. Years ago. <laughs> it's your first time to triumph. It's my first right here. Yeah, it's an exceptional horse. It's an amazing horse. What do you feel about this? What I feel about this, uh, actually nothing. <laughs> it's, it's just amazing. I have no words. You're in the legend of Germany now. Same Andreas Starke with like, Dan like To step in the prince from Andres. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Sorry. You have a perfect race? I have a brilliant race, yeah. I have a brilliant race. And in the straight, I try to go in front. I try to give him the turn of foot. And he fight until the post. <laughs> the emotion is so big. The emotion is more than big. It's, it's, I have no words for that. Congratulations. Nothing. Thank you. Well, it's not surprising that Definitely he's so overcome. <laughs> What a powerful run it was down the outside. And 
And uh, number one, Torquita Tasso has beaten the favourite Tanawa into second, who's just edged out Hurricane Lane in third. Fourth was Adair, who looked as though he had the race won quite early in the home straight. And back in fifth place was Sealaway, a big run from Sealaway. But here is the uh, hero of the hour, the champion today. This four-year-old son of Older Flug. The word Older Flug is just a byword for stamina, isn't it? It's just <laughs> out and out stamina. <laughs> it was a, a really tough race, as we thought it would be in the ground. The uh, rain fell heavily this morning. It was testing conditions, soft, bordering on heavy. And this German-trained colt has relished every yard of it and has seen it out stronger than some very strongly fancied rivals. Yeah, who've won their race, I think. Let's be, let's be honest about it. There's no reason to think that Hurricane Lane and, and Tanawa have, have underperformed. So let's give, the, uh, let's give the winner a good deal of credit, as we say. It may have been... A bit unexpected, well, more than a bit unexpected, Sorry, but uh, <laughs> seemingly no, uh, certainly no fluke about it. I mean, he was second behind In Swoop in the German derby uh, last season. In another, Swoop was runner-up in the yeah, yeah, another, another, another son of uh, and a very, older fluke. <laughs> and In Swoop was very well suited by the deep ground and yeah, stayed yeah. on very strongly. So I, I said it's a generalisation, but a lot of these German trained German bred horses do have tremendous stamina and they do go well in soft ground and here is the perfect example it's a dream victory here are the closing stages Adea, he's got more speed than they would have dared consider and he actually kicked them, he floored, floored them at the 400 metre point here. But it's, it's too early, and I think Williams just pushed the button too soon. Hurricane Lane stayed on really well, as we knew he would do. Tanawa was always going to finish off strongly as well and go in the ground. But they just can't resist Torquato Tasso, who comes with that late charging run down the outside. Sealaway running on well in the yellow jacket, he's going to get up for fifth. Chronogenesis just weakening out of it there. And uh, Snowfall. Snowfall. So to say that the